Good afternoon, everybody. What is going on? I am Jeff Grant Media, and today is a real user review. We are going to take a look at the DB Explorer Pack. Now, to get this out of the way, I am not affiliated with DB Packs in any way. They did reach out to me, ask me if I wanted to take a look at some of their packs. I said yes. They sent me two packs, the Explorer being one of them. I did not pay for this pack, but I am not being endorsed to say anything positive or negative about this year back. Now that that's out of the way, you can see we are um, not in the studio and uh, it's a little noisy. I think they're, they're doing some tree trimming up above the hill, um, but I wanted to change it up a little bit. I like this location, so I figured why not because this bag is intended for outdoor use. Now, they do have the tagline, something like um, it's sleek modern look will take you from the streets to the peaks something along those lines don't quote me on that and while my main use of this bag has been as an edc this bag is actually designed as like a it's for ski pack it's like a ski or snowboard pack so it is made to be out in the elements in the weather to uh be having some fun with and not just carrying it to and from the office which was my primary use now i have taken this on a couple of hikes um so I did see how it handled in the woods. Now this is not my personal prime hiking pack uh, because it lacks a couple of features that I really like, but we will get into all of that. But just like always, we're gonna start our review with a quick spec rundown. This is a DB Explorer, DB being the abbreviation of Douchebags, a company that was started by the one, the only Jan Olsen, a professional alpine skier and now YouTube vlogger. The bag retails at $249 USD. This pack features 20 liters of volume with measurements of 52 centimeters by 26 centimeters by 17 centimeters and weighing 1.4 kilograms. The main materials of the bag are a 500D tarpaulin and a 600D polyester with a 200D polyester liner. And as always, we're going to start with the negatives, the neutral points, and end on a positive note. And one of my negatives, this might be a little bit nitpicky, but it is these actual lashing straps here. Um, there's no way to actually adjust them. When they come, they are tucked inside of the flap, but once you take them out, uh, they don't they don't go back in. You can get them to go back in a little bit, but not enough to kind of give it that clean lay flat against the back look. Now you can see once they're out, this is completely out. It's not they're not that they're not that noticeable. They're not dangling out too much, but I would really have liked to gotten back to that like clean flush against the bag look when I'm not using it. So some way to adjust these would be great. Also, I did not try this with my snowboard. I was going to, but my snowboard is kind of buried behind boxes of decorations and honestly, I was just too lazy to dig it out and try it out. So I would have liked to have tried it with my snowboard, but I think you might need a little bit more of adjustment depending upon the width of the snowboard because snowboards come in a multitude of different sizes. So being able to adjust the length of it would be really useful for something of that nature. Now it also does have this nifty little pocket on the side where you can pull out this extra cross strap that is adjustable. There is adjustment points here. And this has a G-hook closure. It'll actually come out, adjust, and you can latch it to this tab at the bottom. And that is an extra securement point for skis and snowboards. I think this will come in more handy for skis because you're gonna probably cross the skis to get them to sit in there without them wobbling. And then you can cinch this down and that'll really help to hold everything against the bag. So it's not going to be wobbling around, especially if you're doing a hike into ski or snowboard a large mountain. If you wanna peak and then ride down, this is anything that can really help to secure that load to the back of the bag is gonna be very useful, especially if uh, you know skis or snowboards that are a lot longer than the bag or your body, they're gonna to, to sway. So holding it closer and tighter against the bag is definitely going to make that hike in a lot easier. But we're talking about the negative points right now, and that is the fact that this is adjustable and these are not adjustable. I feel like that should be something in a V2 they should really work on is making these adjustable. You can easily just make it just as clean, maybe make this opening a little bit wider so you can tuck the tail back in easier. You can adjust it, tuck the tail in, and then you don't have the excess dangling around. But that is probably my biggest negative point of the bag. Um, honestly, it carries really, really well. So the 
the feel and the fit of the bag, um, I was a little worried about it because it's a tapered design, but it actually carries really, really well. Um, one of the other negatives is this carry handle right here. As you can see, I put a little piece of paracord on here. So if I'm out and about, and because there are no exterior water bottle pockets on this bag, if I wanna get my drink inside the pack, I like to hang my bag and then strap the handle, grab handle, while it's well padded and it feels comfortable in hand, it's not large enough and the way it sits on the bag, you can't hang it from something. So I added a piece of paracord here so I can easily just hang it from a tree, which also makes it easier because the bag is rear entry. I can hang it and I can spin it depending upon if I want to get in the back of the bag or if I want to get in the front of the bag. With the extra bit of paracord, it kind of lets it dangle so I can easily just spin this bag around. So making this grab handle maybe a little bit wider or at a different point on the bag would make it easier to hang the bag from a tree or something or even to store the pack when you're not using it. And that's really about it for the negatives. The rest are neutral points that are probably going to be nitpicky on my part. I say this about every bag that I get that doesn't have exterior water bottle pockets. There's no exterior water bottle pockets. But again, this bag is made for uh, like a more of a mountaineering, snowboarding, skiing, where you're gonna be bouncing around in the backwoods, in the back country. So that would probably just leave a tendency from the fall out. So yeah, I get why they don't have it. So it's a neutral point. I just personally like it on all my packs. Now, another thing, it's a neutral point. If you're not going to be skiing or snowboarding with this pack, it's a rear entry back. So if you're not going to be riding and you're gonna EDC this pack, that's a neutral point because it's not a, it's not a deal breaker but it does become a bit annoying because you now have to take your shoulder straps, flip them back to access your zipper every time you want to get into the bag. So it does make it a little bit more difficult to get in and out of the bag quickly. And you can't just do a single shoulder sling and get into the main body of the bag. Yes, you can still get into the front panel, but that's just your front panel. You don't have full access to everything inside your bag. So if you were going to just EDC this pack or use it in the city, be well aware that it is a rear entry pack. So you're going to have to completely remove the bag from your body, hold your straps back to actually access the bag. Now, again, with this being a outdoor pack, it does have this tapered look so it feel so it actually forms to the body which makes it an issue if you are going to be working in the city doing a coffee shop where you're doing work on your computer or something because you can't fit that many computers into this bag and if you do it will fit my 2016 macbook pro but i cannot put it inside of a case so i'm just kind of framing the computer in there and zipping the bag up around it so you can see it's not gonna fit a larger 15 inch Acer computer, which is a pretty standard size for a laptop. It's certainly not gonna fit this mega Dell 15 inch Inspiron gaming laptop, but it will fit a couple different tablets. Like this is an Acer tablet. This is an older iPad. I believe it's about 11, 11 and a quarter inches. And it will also fit my newer Amazon Fire 10 tablet with no problems. But because of the design of this bag, it's not gonna fit many laptops and again, my 2016 MacBook Pro, that is a 15 inch, will fit. If you have something that's slim like that, it will fit. But again, I couldn't put it in case and I had to just put it in bare raw and kind of zip the bag in around it. Um, so I wouldn't carry my computer like that. So if you are going to be EDCing this pack, be known, let it be known that you are not going to be securely and safely able to carry a laptop in it. You're gonna need something a little bit bigger or at least something that doesn't have that tapered design. And lastly, for the neutral points, it's going to be this internal organization. Um, it's set up for an avalanche kit. So if, again, if you're gonna be EDCing it, there's this strap here that um, I honestly have absolutely no clue how to use this. Um, I'm guessing it somehow secures an avalanche kit, but if you're not using an avalanche kit, it does have a fair amount of organization here. You do have your pocket up on the top here, which barely fits my first aid kit. And then I have the rest of my uh, first aid and, and other accessories down in here and a bit of paracord I like to carry. It's strapped in really well, but there's not a lot of organization to the pack um, for an admin panel. So if you are going to be using this in the backcountry, you can definitely fit an avalanche kit in there. 
how I'm, I have no idea to be honest with you. I've never, never been in the backcountry like that. My, uh, my experience with uh, backcountry skiing is uh, just going off trail in uh, pretty much Pennsylvania, New York, and Vermont. And we're not that far in the backcountry. You probably are within a five to ten minute hike out into a trail if you need to. So I've never had a carrying avalanche kit, so I don't know exactly what they look like. So with that said, uh, I guess we're going to move to positive. And we're going to start with the way this bag feels and it carries on the body because it's actually quite, quite comfortable. Now it is November in Pennsylvania and it's going anywhere between like low 20s to mid 40s now. So I've worn this with probably maybe three or four different like jacket combinations. That being this lighter, thinner uh, Patagonia Nano Puff. I've worn it with uh, a 650 uh, down Eddie Bauer uh, puffer jacket. I've worn it for North Face Tri Climate, variety of different sweatshirts, uh, uh, t shirt. I did wear this a couple times, but still actually warm out. Um, I think I've worn it with another jacket or two, my rain jacket, and it, it fits well in every one of those, over one of those jackets, every one of those situations. It wore really well, it was comfortable, it was nice on the back. Um, the polyester backing, it was nice. It slid on and off my jackets, but I didn't feel like it was like swaying on me. It did sit well on my shoulders, and I liked the carry of the bag. It was comfortable to carry. The shoulder straps aren't super thick, but I wasn't carrying skis or snowboards with it, so I didn't really need like all my go ruck padding in this thing. It was perfectly fine for me. So ultimately, the carry, it was good. I enjoyed the carry. It was comfortable. Um, the pass through the grab handle is, even though it's not good for hanging, it is a little padded, so it's comfortable when you're doing the cross car hand when you're dropping it on the passenger seat in and out of the car to get to and from the office. Because I've said this before, if you're not following, I have been working in the office through this entire pandemic. So I have been commuting to work every day since the beginning of this, like nothing has changed, except that the office is not empty, which I like, I get so much more work done when I'm not being constantly bothered. So. Um, yeah, I've been taking this in the car just about every Monday through Friday to get to work in the past uh, couple of weeks. It works just fine. And there is also an extra grab area in the shoulder straps, which I think I might have grabbed on accident once or twice. It's not the best grab, but it works in a pinch, especially if you're reaching over and grabbing without paying attention. Uh, I, I have stuck my hand through that once or twice. It was fine. Again, the bag's only about 20, it's only 20 liters, so it doesn't weigh too, too much. So if I accidentally grabbed the wrong spot, it was fine, it didn't, it didn't hurt my hand or any way, but the top grab handle is actually pretty nice. Um, so overall, the positive is, the biggest positive is the carry experience. It felt really nice on my back with the tapered design. Um, a lot of times, I know a lot of people don't like it because you have to pack the bag a certain way, but it does make wearing the pack a lot more comfortable because it does fit the body better. And uh, my other main bag that I have used quite a bit with the same design is the Everglades MPL 30. It also has that tapered body because we are bulkier at the shoulders and thinner at the waist, so our bodies go down. So it does kind of hurt the carry of the pack, the way you have to pack the back out. You don't always get a lot of space at the bottom, so you do have to maybe put a little more thought into how you pack the bag. But for the carry, it is very comfortable. It does make carrying this pack and other packs like that a lot more comfortable on the body. But with that being said, the internal of the bag actually has quite a bit of space, so you don't have to stack and layer in such a way that you would with a lot of other paper design bags. So you can actually pack out the main compartment of this bag a lot easier than you can with some other bags that I've used, like the Evergoods MPL 30. The way that tapers, I really have to put a lot of thought into how I'm packing and stacking inside that bag. But with the uh, DP Explorer, it actually packed out very nicely for me. I didn't really have to put too much thought. I could still just throw a bunch of my crap in there and go, and uh, everything sat in there pretty nicely. Now, going back to the organization, we showed you the front pocket, showed you the main pocket. The only other real compartments of organization is this top um, depth deep pocket that I kind of just throw some of my quick grab items and I'll throw my work badge in here at the end of the day so I can get it in and out easily. Now this is a forgot. So the only thing is it's not, doesn't have a nice plush liner anyway. It's uh, just a polyester liner. So you are gonna probably want to stick those inside. Uh, they generally come with like a fuzzy carrying case. Throw them in there so you don't scratch anything up on the lenses. Um, but it's probably made that way because any fuzzy material, if your goggles are wet and you put them in here, 
That's gonna get wet, it's gonna take longer to dry, where this polyester will actually dry pretty rapidly. But if you had any like corduroy or fleece lining in here, it's gonna take a lot longer to dry. So then the bag is gonna be wet on the inside, you're gonna take longer, your stuff inside can get wet, you're gonna get a mildewy smell, which isn't good. Polyester is gonna dry much quicker than fleece. So keep that in mind, if you are gonna throw sunglasses or anything in here, I would still put them inside some sort of protective case so the lenses don't get scratched up in any way. Not like the uh, polyester is abrasive, but if you have to throw your hands in here, there's no soft liner. And I always feel like someone that wears glasses constantly, I know something, just about anything, could scratch these things. So I always like to put my lenses in something protective if I don't have that nice belt or fleece or corduroy line pocket for it. So uh, keep that in mind. Another nice feature is all of the daisy chain for the sternum strap. It is very adjustable. There is a lot of points where you can adjust this to. It's like a fidlock buckle, but it breaks off in a different way where you have to pop it up and then slide it out. It doesn't slide sideways. It clips back together very easily, but the motion to break the connection is different than I'm used to. So it just took me a minute or two to get used to it. Every once in a while, I'm trying to do it one hand and I'll be trying to pop it sideways like I would with a regular fidlock buckle. And this doesn't do that. So you need, I guess you probably could do it with one hand. No, kind of, you need two hands to kind of pop it up and then slide it. But it does clip back together easily. It works really well. It was just different. It wasn't what I was used to. So it does still take some getting used to. But EDCing it, I usually just let it dangle, which is why I haven't really adjusted it. I did use it on, I think, one of the two hikes I took, um, kind of to see how it felt. It felt fine. I did notice that I should have lit, raised it up a little bit for my comfort, but it was fine. It was comfortable enough the way I was carrying it that I didn't feel like stopping my hike and adjusting it with a kid and a dog, and it's just, there's a lot to do. So it was just easier to leave it where I had it, and it was fine enough. Just again, the only thing that was a little different is this is a magnetic release but it's not a fidlock so it does pop up pop open differently than a fidlock buckle would so all in all final summation of the db explorer do i like it would i buy it do i recommend you buy it um it depends on your usage if you're going to be doing some backcountry skiing and you want something small that is comfortable um i think you should buy, definitely give this a try or at least Take it into consideration. It was very comfortable to wear for me. Uh, it worked well on my, my couple of short hikes. It was, again, comfortable to wear on my EDC. I wore it with a lot of different layers, a lot of different jacket types, and it felt really good. Now, I did not put a snowboard. I don't have, I don't own skis, so I couldn't even try it if I wanted to. Put the big heavy weight on the back of it, so I don't know how it would carry with a ton of weight, because the shoulder straps, they're not super thick but they are very comfortable for an EDC application. So the shoulder straps might need to be a little bit thicker, in my opinion, if you're gonna be carrying. Uh, skis are definitely gonna be lighter than a snowboard, but if you're gonna be carrying them in the backcountry, you might want to consider something else just because these straps might not be deep enough for you if you're going to be doing a long hike in. Um, if you're gonna be EDCing this pack, if you are not a laptop user, if you are a tablet user, then yes, this is actually a really nice bag. It doesn't stand up well on its own, but it does have a flatter bottom. So if you get it just right, you could, depending upon what you have packed in the bottom, you could get it to stand up on its own. I did do it once or twice. Of course, Murphy's Law, when the camera comes out, I could not get it to stand up on its own, but I have got to stand up on its own once or twice. So if you are a tablet user, then this is gonna be a pretty good size for you. It's comfortable to carry. You can stick the tablet in the front compartment where you can easily access it without taking the bag fully off. But if you are a laptop user, this is not the pack for you as your laptop is either not going to fit or it will just barely fit without protection. So you're probably gonna to wanna to try something different uh, just because you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of dedicated laptop compartment or safe way to carry your computer because this is not going to offer you that. But I was pretty happy with the experience with the DB Explorer. Um, it wore really well, it was comfortable. It worked in the couple of the applications I used this in. I did not dad bag this because a dad bag, in my opinion at least, definitely needs exterior water bottle pockets because you never know when you have to quickly grab that juice or that water bottle for the kid. So external water bottle pockets on a dad bag is a necessity. So I did not dad bag this because uh, there aren't any of those water bottle pockets. 
So all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with the bag. Uh, $250 might be a little bit higher on the price point, I think, for a 20 liter pack. It's not super feature rich. That is, unless you need to carry an avalanche kit, then it's got the exact feature that you're looking for. But $250, it's, uh, it seems like it might be a little high. I think this is probably more like a $200 price range bag. It's not bad. Uh, it's pretty nice and simple. You do have some extra webbing on the front that's a little tight. I forgot to mention it because it kind of blends well with the bag, but it does have these little pieces. Uh, sorry to get my finger in there of webbing. So you could lash a few things on there, but it's pretty tight. You're not really gonna be able to get much more than some, maybe some additional webbing in there to help lash your board, your skis to your bag. But that's why you have this built-in cross strap right over here. So all in all, the DB Explorer, it's a pretty okay pack. It's purpose-built, but designed to look like it can fit in just about any setting, but it doesn't necessarily handle every setting. So uh, maybe take some time to think about what you gotta carry before you decide to purchase this pack. Uh, Construction-wise, I feel fine. I feel like this thing is going to last quite a while. It feels like it's built really, really well, but uh, it might not carry what you need it to carry in every situation. So if you like this video or any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button. Ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications the next time I post a brand new video. Good night.